Hey guys, welcome back to Loved and Found. My name is Ivana Medina and I'm so happy that you're here today. It's been a couple weeks and I know I promised I would do a video weekly, but I was out of town and a lot happened. So today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what my relationship with God used to be like and about kind of what it is now. And so when I first got saved, I remember feeling like I remember feeling like God was really far away. Like not that he was with me and yes, he could hear me and I knew that God knew everything, but I didn't really understand what it was like to really live my life with him, to really understand that he was always with me, to understand that he would hear me all the time, to understand that he was just one call away. And that was a realization that really changed my life to kind of understand what it was like to do life with God. Um, I remember about a year ago, I had a huge question. And the question was, how can I be spirit led? And to me, that was such a foreign concept because I'm a person that by nature, I'm very emotional. And so my whole life, I had just been led by my feelings and my emotions. And I would be like, this is how I feel. So this is how it is. And it would create my whole reality. And then when I started encountering people that were being spirit led and that were doing life with God constantly, it was something that I craved. And so it was actually in my visit to Mississippi the first time that I had answers to this question. And I think a lot of it, I'll definitely go into depth in more videos because it's a lot to unpack. But I think the first step was definitely understanding that I get to do life with God. Here in Mississippi, I live by myself but I don't really live by myself because I, this place is just filled with his presence all the time. Like I know that he's always with me. And that has been something that really broke so many chains and fears off of me. Once I understood that the living God, the King of all Kings, the Alpha and the Omega wanted to live with me, wanted to do life with me, wanted to direct my steps so that I could walk into his perfect will. And so today, kind of what I want to share with you is that because I came to the realization that when this clicked for me, my life changed and that I went from being a Sunday Christian to understanding that I live a way in which I follow God each and every single second of my day and that the more I commune with him, the more I speak to him, the more I read my word, the more I pray, the more I am aware of his presence. And I think that was such a big prayer for me. Lord, I want to be made aware of your presence. And the more I prayed it out, the more real he became. And I remember moving here and talking to my pastor and being like, it's like he's more real than anything else. And I know that when I talk about this and people are like, wow, Ivana, you are a little fanatic or a little radical. And the truth is I don't want to live my life any other way. I don't want to be lukewarm, I've been cold, I've been sold out to the world, and I by nature am a very passionate person. And so if I was so sold out to the world and doing all these things in the flesh, it's only natural that I would be this sold out to him, this passionate to God, because he's the only one that's paid that price for me. And so today's topic is living with God. That sounds so funny, but it's true. It's the fact that wherever you are, if you have accepted Jesus into your heart, confessed it with your mouth, believed it in your heart, and you have really dedicated your life to Christ, that he is right there with you where you are, that he sees you, he hears you, he cares about you, about each and every single thing that you care about, and that he has a really great plan for your life. And so this was the verse that was on my heart definitely for this talk. And it's Psalm 145, 18 from the New Living Translation it says, The Lord is close to all who call on Him. Yes, to all who call on Him in truth. And so, so many times I remember when I first started my walk with God, I remember feeling like, okay, He's in heaven and yeah, He can hear me. But it, there wasn't this sense that He was always around me, that He could hear me if I just cried out to him right away that he sees me and so he sees what's going on that he cares about each and every single detail about my life about the fact that when I prayed he would actually hear me that was something that definitely changed my prayers I remember when I first got here and kind of dove into prayer I started to understand 
why the prayers of a righteous man avail much? I remember hearing that and being like, I don't get it. But it's the fact that because we have been redeemed and we're his children, he hears us. We know that if he hears us and we're praying according to his will, that we can have a confidence that it will happen. And that's actually found in 1 John 5, 14, that we have this confidence that we can come before God in prayer and ask him for anything that's according to his will. And it wasn't until I really started diving into the word and just kind of reading and meditating and doing devotionals and, and praying it out that I began to understand all the access to what I had because of the price that Jesus had paid because of that sacrifice, because I was living on crumbs. And so one of my favorite books is The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. And he says this quote, and I'm just going to paraphrase it so I don't have to go get the book and read it. But pretty much he says, the saddest thing to see is God's children sitting at the table and starving. You see, the word says that he has set a table for us. He has a place to commune with us, to talk to us, where we could go before him. And we're just sitting there and we're okay with just going to church on Sunday or listening to a podcast or every so often just praying over our food or praying at night. And I can say that because I've been there. But the truth is that there is so much more that God wants to give you. And so many times you have so many other things that are pressing in our lives, so many things that we find more important, so many things, so many things that we just give all our attention that in reality, God is like, hey, I'm here whenever you want because he's always there and he always cares and he and he wants to guide you, he wants to show you, he wants to open up your eyes to see his greatness, his glory, to be able to do his works, to see prayers come to pass. He is a miracle working God, he is the living God. And so, so many times we treat him like, yeah, you know, you're just way up there and, um, all the way here with my problems when what he wants is for you to open up so that he can encounter you and he can lead you into the way of his perfect will. It's just about understanding the fact that God is there with you right now, that he hears you right now, that God isn't trying to change you because you're bad, that God loves you so much he doesn't want to leave you the same way that he found you because he loves you and he wants you to live an abundant life, a life filled with his presence and his joy. And so, so often when we start to really be led by the spirit, we also start to see that there are so many things that have to change about it. God's never gonna force you to change, but the more time you spend in his presence, the more you will look like him. And so you'll start to see how you'll just let go of things and how things won't matter as much when you focus and find him because he becomes all that satisfies. He becomes number one priority in your life. He takes the chief seat in your heart and he's able to do so much more. And so those things you've been praying about, they just kind of happen because God was able to come in and do it. But what you first did was understand that he is always with you. That it's not just a moment in worship in which you feel chills and start to cry or raise your hands or in a group of people where you're praying. That there is just as much power in the living God when you're by yourself in your living room or in your prayer closet or doing your devotional and that he's there with you and that he wants to speak to you. And so I think the way I'm going to take this video is just an opening video to talk about being spirit led. Talk about the fact that God wants an end to your life. That God wants to have communion with you. And I don't just mean communion as in the elements and you know the bread and the wine, but he wants a community with you. He wants to be able to speak to you. Somebody brought up this in a comment as a question in one of the other videos, how do I hear from God? And the truth is, God is always speaking. We're just never quiet enough to listen. And so one of the most important things that I have found in my walk with God is that if I want to hear from God, I need to quiet not only all the other voices, but my own, so that I could sit and allow him to speak. That I need to know my word so that I know his character that I need to really dig deep inside of me and see, Lord, is there anything that has been put before you that is stopping this communication and just allow him to speak. And so that's pretty much what this video is about. It's gonna be an intro. 
whew, to learning how to be spirit led. I did not think we were gonna go this way, but it's gonna be awesome. This is something that changed my life and something that, um, and something that the community around me really lives out very well. It's something that has been kind of taught to me by just spiritual mentors and um, people that surround me. And so I definitely want to encourage you to pray to ask God to make his presence known to you, to open up your heart to what he wants to tell you and to really allow him to have a part in your life. And not just a part, but the main part, the main focus. And sometimes it's hard because it will no longer be yourself. And most of the time it'll be about others, but that's just because the heart of the Father is that once you are filled up with his love you can pour it out into other people and he will always be pouring into you and so i want to take a second just to pray for you um definitely if you need to take a second and pause this video and pray for yourself and ask if this is something that you even want to do i want to encourage you to do that um but yeah i guess that's where this video is going <laughs> father lord we thank you for who you are for your loving heart, for your kindness and your goodness, for what a good, good father you are. Lord, I thank you that you hear us, that you see us, that you are in each and every single place that we are, that you go before us, that you surround us, that you are inside of us through your Holy Spirit. And we just thank you that you're always speaking. Lord, I pray that each and every single person that hears this, Father, would hear your voice clearly would understand your character, would have a hunger for your presence, and Lord, that your word would just come alive to them, that you would just speak to them, Lord, and, and allow them to hear your voice so clearly, to really grow in a relationship with you, and to open up their hearts so that you could take your rightful seat. We love you, we honor you, we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so, um, I guess we are starting our first a kind of series I guess and so it'll be how to be spirit-led this is gonna be a lot of fun I'm definitely gonna bring on some people for the next videos and so um, I'll see you guys next time Bye.